So we're at the OM, O-M is spelled, Passage Grave, which dates to the Neolithic period. It's at least, potentially, you know, 3,500 BC. So this is contemporary, potentially, with West Kennet and even the Knapp of Hower on uh, Papa Westray up in Orkney. Um, originally, it was thought to be a mound, but in 1932, they dug through the top and local potato farmers actually found when they dropped a stone in the hole they dug at the top, it sort of hit a stone at the bottom and, they re and it rolled around. So they realized it was actually um, a definitely a sort of passage can or passage tomb or, or a long barrow. Uh, or round barrow with a chamber tomb inside it. So um, it's very interesting. It was used right up to 700 BC. They found pottery in here, very reminiscent of um, some beaker pottery and even grooved ware style. And that's the thing with Denmark though, that there was no Roman invasion, there was no Christianity for a very long time. So they were building these megalithic sites up until really the time of the Vikings and even afterwards. So. This is a really interesting site. The inner chamber is about seven meters long, so it's quite a big one. And it's one of the most well-preserved tombs, uh, certainly megalithic tombs in the whole of Denmark. So I'm just walking into the, the main chamber here. I can already see cobwebs and spiders, but I'm just gonna have to deal with that, I guess. Just ignore that. And you can actually see what looks like carvings on the wall already. So, Let's get into the main chamber. Let's turn the light on. Oh, that's pretty big. Wow. Whoa, yes, that is quite large. Much bigger than I was expecting. That's pretty amazing. Let me get a sense of it. Difficult to see, it's not the best light in here. But the chamber comes in and it kind of out that direction. Kind of faces southeast, more or less sort of southeast east This is more or less the direction of the winter solstice sunrise at this latitude. And you can see markings on some of the stones, much like we see it in other sites around the world. Great big lintel there on top. Generally, it's very impressive actually. I think it's these capstones at the top here, which weigh in excess of 25 tons, which make this site particularly impressive. You can just, now I've got the other torch on you, you can just get a sense of the shape of some of the stones in here. That was almost like a heart shape. Some people have put logs in here so they can sit down, probably do their own little ceremonies and there's little candles. These huge, very crystalline rocks above me are really, really big. And it's like sort of more like sandstone there mixed with what looks like granite. It may not be, it could be another crystalline type of rock. Then we have the massive bulging stones above us as you come in through the entrance there. You have these huge ones up here. They're absolutely huge. So this goes way back to the Neolithic period, to at least 3,400 BC. So let's try to see some detail in here. It's really difficult. It is like pitch black, apart from at the entrance. But it's really not dissimilar to West Kennet Long Barrow and some of the chambers we saw in Orkney interesting to get some measurements here but it's this stone here that kind of intrigues me this one here just looks like there's some markings on it you might be able to see them from this angle even on this one up here perhaps is that even a spiral carving just there some kind of cut mark 
There could be like chippings and cut marks on these. It is really hard to tell though. They're very worn. But it's just these ones over here which kind of intrigue me. Are they, are they markings or are they just, you know, the way the, you know, the rock naturally forms? You can kind of see them all the way around the edge here. All the way from down there. It does look like there's patterns on there, it really does, but... So it's not only this tomb we have here at Om, or Om, however you pronounce it, but over in the distance over there, there's another great mound, which is obviously some kind of uh, chambered tomb. It's been obliterated by the looks of it. There's really not much left there to see. I flew the drone over it to get some idea. Seems like these were sister sites. They work, work together. They're both oriented roughly southeast, so potentially winter solstice. So it's interesting that you have two here. There's probably more. I mean, sometimes you have whole fields of these ancient sites. In fact, I've read that in, there's more sites in Denmark than there are in Brittany and Britain combined, which is saying something. And so um, we haven't seen that many. We don't see them everywhere, but because it's so low lying and right near sea level, a lot of them, a lot of the mud and silt builds up covers them and they sink um so it's a pity but here is the first one we've seen here and we're heading further south right down to uh the south coast um on the eastern part of um, zealand or it's, it's a different area it's called and to have a look at more sites down there but it's really the sites over in jutland where it gets really really ancient and really really interesting type of megalithic explorer called a JJ Ainsworth. Here she comes and she stopped and she's seen the camera and she's wondering what's going on in here. But she's, oh no, she's continuing through. She's avoided spiders and she's in. Oh, well done. Mm -hmm. 